thank you ignu for inviting me uh, to this lecture series uh, i uh, will talk to you today about the uh, national education policy 2020 and especially its focus on the uh, academic uh, research quality you know if you look at the section 18 uh, in nep 2020 uh it talks about catalyzing quality academic research uh, through a new national research foundation so nrf is something what nep is proposing and i must tell you that uh, uh, nep is one of the most uh, uh, transformational policy that we are getting after a very very long time after over three decades this policy has come and uh, the genuine focus on the uh, indian uh, knowledge systems and research Uh, is very important i'll touch upon some of these uh, uh, subjects uh, during my uh, talk of about 30 minutes you know as all of us know uh, we have a long historical tradition of research and knowledge creation especially in science technology humanities art and literature medicine and agriculture and we can go on naming several scholars uh, from ancient india uh, you know uh, not only the inventor of zero but the kanad who also talked about uh, basics of physics and uh, uh, the aryabhat or amir and uh, chanakya panini and uh, patanjali charak sushrut the list is very long so the research and innovation tradition was there in bharat i would say because when we talk about india we start thinking about india only after uh, 1947 but we have a history of thousands of years you know so bharat and bharatiya gyan parampara is something uh, which we have to really consider at the backdrop when we are talking about uh, research in 21st century uh, there is no doubt that uh, india uh, or bharat actually uh, uh, and that's why prime minister has uh, appealed us for atmanirbhar bharat and atmanirbhar bharat uh, we have to also uh, regain atmasanman and regaining atma sanman uh, for atmanirbhar bharat requires uh, to learn from our heritage our culture our tradition and take them forward with the current science and technology for innovation uh, so we need to really reclaim our tradition uh, to emerge as a knowledge society and also emerge as a stronger economy in the world because without research and innovation this is not possible a significant expansion of our research capacities and output across disciplines is very very vital for instance if i may just quote which is there in uh, nep 2020 uh, it says that or it's uh, rather gives some figures you know the research and innovation investment in india has been very very small uh, for instance just 0.69% of the gdp and if you compare with uh, the other countries example uh, united states is about 2.8% china is about 2.1% israel is about 4.3% south korea a smaller country and a much smaller country uh, is spending something like 4.2% almost 3 to 4 times more than what we are spending so the uh, establishment of national research foundation comes uh, as a very uh, prominent hope uh, to move in the right direction uh, because the overarching goal of nrf is to enable a culture of research Uh, to permeate through our uh, universities because the culture of research has to permeate through our universities especially uh, the state universities and public institutions where research capability is currently limited you know and we have to provide a very reliable base of merit based at the same time equitable peer review research funding you know uh, to help develop this kind of a research culture in our institutions if you look at the the research output and its impact and if you take a, a kind of a, a span overview uh, from 1996 to 2010 as the first step you know and if you take a data from web of science or scopus uh, these are the most reputed search engines you know you will find that uh, india trails behind you know in india uh, trails behind even uh, of, of smaller countries like japan or uh, united kingdom or germany us of course is one of the top in the list but uh, india uh, still trails even behind china india is trailing behind china and this is something uh, which uh, we have to work on very very seriously 
uh, i am a biomedical research scientist you know and therefore my talk i will be taking examples from biomedical research you know but while i take examples of biomedical research uh, what i am telling you is true to many other disciplines as well for instance if you take uh, compare uh, countries like say uh, india america china and germany and uh, biomedical research output if you get data which we call it as cytometric data uh, from this corpus so still you will find that uh, india uh, trails uh, behind and uh, while during last decade i would say that the efforts from indian scientific community are showing now internationally and therefore our position is becoming stronger and stronger still we have a long way to go uh, while we talk about research now i will say something about uh, uh, what is the current status you know if i if i take example of biomedical research you know let me tell you that somehow uh, in our country at least you know the research has been going on Uh, more uh, on the uh, uh, lines of routine if i may say so because there is a very less component of originality and innovation for example in medical sciences if you look at you know what kind of uh, original contributions have come from medical sciences from india if you add this question you know we have to really search very hard for instance uh, new molecules new drugs how many of them have come from india uh, the number may be very very small as compared to Uh, many other countries you know so uh, this at the same time if we look at the potential and knowledge which we have is enormous but somehow there is disconnect we are looking at our own heritage just to take pride you know uh, and uh, taking pride uh, in past glory is important but we should not really uh, become uh, uh, kind of a, uh, sitting back and we just saying that when somebody else invents something you know we knew it and it is there in our old text we should use our ancient knowledge as a knowledge resource and build on that new research innovative research and move on and show the world that this is what uh, uh, bharatiya gyan parampara had which world did not know and now we are coming out with the new science and technology in medicine for instance you know the plastic surgery all of us know is documented uh, in indian uh, uh, subcontinent even during british period there has been systematic documentation when the uh, community of kumars used to do this plastic surgery uh, very very efficiently especially the uh, transplantation of nose because during olden period you know cutting of chopping of nose was considered as the dehumiliating punishment uh, that was given uh, at that time so nose uh, uh transplantation implantation was very very uh, necessary so there is a detailed process which is given uh, so we don't have to go back to sushrut period of course sushrut is considered to be one of the uh, pioneers or founders of surgery of modern surgery in india so i can give you more and more such uh, examples but let's uh, look at what is happening in modern science today globally uh, one of the most reputed journal uh, all of you may have heard is lancet you know it's one of the most reputed biomedical journal and lancet came out with a series and in that series one of the most reputed scientists uh, from stanford his name is john yevnadis you know and he published a series of articles and in which he showed that 85% of the research that goes in biomedical research is wasted actually that means it is of no use research if it is not going to be useful for people what kind of research we are doing you know research just for sake of research is not going to be beneficial for our country especially we have to invest in research which will be practically useful and get back to something to the society so this kind of a wastage in research is happening because of several reasons primarily we don't ask right questions you know asking the right research question is the first step which we don't invest much time in that uh, most of our studies or many of our studies may be badly designed uh, and therefore they are not publishable or reported properly in uh, the reputed journals you know so i would say that creativity and scientific research should be for search of truth creating new body of knowledge and it is about pleasure we should take pleasure in doing research it should be about our devotion your our own commitment and never ending quest for innovation you know and research should not be used merely for the purpose of publications it is not some kind of a race i have to become uh, uh, 
from associate professor to a professor therefore i have to publish it is it, it it should not be converted into some kind of a desperation uh, to publish which we witness today because today research is more is happening because i want to do phd because phd will open me doors for getting job in the universities or academic institution or we do research to get recognition in my uh, name, uh, name prefix doctor will come and i will get more uh, recognition in the society you know these are not the reasons for doing research uh socio economic benefits uh, obviously as expected from research but they should be natural outcomes the first purpose of research should be in search of truth and creating new body of knowledge you know but somehow what happened is during uh, last uh, especially 3 4 decades you know slowly uh, the uh, erosion uh, in terms of what i would like to call it academic integrity was very very visible uh in our country you know and especially it was more visible uh, during the uh, last two decades you know and uh, i will just uh, uh, talk about some of these cases you know uh, so i will also discuss some of the plagiarism uh, incidences which happened in india and all this actually tarnishes image of our country and therefore i'm uh, stressing more uh, on academic integrity uh, and uh, publication ethics uh, and uh, Uh, the issues related to plagiarism uh, in our country i come from pune university so i remember while i was at pune university in 1992 to 1994 no uh, one of the most uh, debated uh, case of plagiarism uh, was on on earth and that case in court went on up to 2018 finally when high court gave a verdict and the two senior professors were actually uh, sacked from their service senior professors were sacked from their service in 1996 another uh, uh, case happened in the same university you know and this is just i'm giving you few example but in every university you will find that such cases uh, exist you know and uh, uh, if you really take uh, go deep into why this is happening and why people become so desperate to publish why people tend to take shortcuts uh unfortunately i must mention that the root cause of that goes in regulation and uh, uh, while uh, i am saying that i am also give, going to give you some example for instance you know uh, and all these regulations i must tell you that were made with good intentions you know but uh, somehow people try to misuse them you know and try to find shortcuts for, for first uh, i will give example of ugc regulation while i was at ugc we have discussed this thoroughly and therefore i am frankly sharing with you ugc regulation 2010 which talked about api you know academic performance indicators you know they gave a certain amount of weightage to national publications international publications etc national conferences international pub so there is nothing like international uh, publication or national publication or international journal or national journal you know journals are based on the quality of journal not whether they are national or international for example current science although published in india is an international journal you know and there could be several journals which are named as international journal global journal world journals they may not be even worth considering that they are journals you know so uh, somehow we created at that time a culture called as publish or perish you know? and that created a compulsion or desperation to publish you know? and uh, Uh, while it was again uh, considered uh, in good uh, spirit or for good purpose well meaning you know still it led to in uh, 2018 ugc regulation about academic integrity one of the very good regulation which ugc came forward uh, which talks about first time the uh, plagiarism how to handle it uh, how to do similarity check how to avoid plagiarism what could be the punishments about plagiarism what are the levels of acceptability of similarity and etc etc you know and during the same time uh, while i was not at ugc i was at pune university we did a study ugc had come out with a list of uh, uh, approved list of journals you know and we 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 actually analyzed that list and we showed in 2018 that 88% of the journals which were in the approved list of ugc were uh, predatory or dubious you know and this was shocking and this was bringing all kind of bad reputation to our country uh, journals like science and nature 
uh, wrote editorials and articles uh, uh, showing that how maximum more and more number of Indian authors are falling prey to these predators. And it was really very, very awkward situation for all. Uh, there were questions in the parliament and uh, that time minister also asked a question in the vice chancellor conference that I heard uh, that now we are going to also consider Chanda Mama and Champak as uh, research journalists. You know, I mean, this kind of a situation was there. When uh, I joined UGC, you know, my first priority was to fix this. And therefore, uh, uh, you will see that uh, the UGC care uh, came in force. You know, and I'll talk about it a uh, little later. But uh, UGC care really uh, uh, try to fix this in a good year. So the, I, I'm, I'll come again back to the desperation to publish. You know. Again, I will repeat that temptation to taking shortcut is not advisable. Publication or uh, PAD thesis is not for name and fame, for position and authority, for in some kind of foreign tours or committee membership or grants and funds or promotions or academic elections or increments. No, these are all uh, coincidental. You know, they, they should not be our purpose, you know. And uh, the predatory publishing, you know, we witnessed during last, uh, uh, especially during last 10, 15 years. Uh, and when we tried to curb that uh, by creating well-meaning uh, mechanisms such as uh, uh, the UGC list of approved journals, etc. You know, I would uh, uh, tell you that the... Uh, API for promotion and eligibility condition, focus on compliance. When we give regulation, the, uh, the focus becomes on compliance. And the compliance focus tempts people to take shortcuts and uh, therefore pay and publish culture emerge. And all these journals, you know, which were created and you will be surprised and you may know also, many of these journals actually are fake. You know, they don't have whatever they show on the website, the information is actually not correct. The names of the editors which we put in may not even exist. You know, So practically it became like a Nigerian lottery scam. And all of a sudden you also may have noticed, many of you may have noticed that during 2010-15, uh, many of us started getting emails uh, saying that uh, we recognize your academic excellence and all, and so therefore you are requested to come on our editorial board. And name of these journals were very fancy, International Journal of XYZ, Global Journal, and all, all that kind of stuff. And many of uh, us at that time have fallen prey uh, to this kind of a gimmick, you know. So pay and publish trash culture uh, was uh, uh, very, very essential to curb. And uh, uh, therefore we converted the approved list uh, to a reference list of quality journals. So today you see on the UGC website or CARE website, what we give is a reference list of quality journals. So it is up to you. You know, UGC, why UGC should decide which journals are good and bad, you know? It is up to the academic fraternity. It is about the university. When somebody is uh, giving interview, it is the job of the selection committee and the vice chancellor uh, to see at the micro level, whether the quality of research work is good and not only where that person has published it, you know. So the responsibility we have put or the onus we have put back on the university academic leadership, uh, because if we try to regulate, I remember the Cobra effect, you know, you may know that during British period in Delhi, this is known as Cobra effect. Uh, there were too many Cobras uh, in that area. And so British government uh, announced a prize. If somebody kills a cobra and bring the dead cobra, they used to get some money. And then the result was initially cobras, uh, genuinely people were catching, killing and getting a reward. But then people found out that there is a good economic model, business model in it. And they started actually cultivating cobras, you know, and cultivating cobras and then killing them and then getting the money, you know. So this kind of a cultivating cobras today, the same model was used by predatory publishers. They came out with more and more such bad journals and they tried to lure uh, the uh, academic community uh, uh, and actually sold uh, uh, these uh, publications. And it went to such an extent that if somebody wants to improve API of last year, you know, journals were ready. And even today, some of them are ready to improve your API by giving you backdated publications also. So we made a mockery of this scientific research and publications and uh, therefore academic misconduct became very, very important handling that. Typically academic misconduct is a data fabrication, falsification of results or misleading uh, research uh, subjects or conflicts of interest 
hiding conflicts of interest these are some of the uh, uh, important challenges we have to really uh, address you know uh, and most of the, of the key drivers if you look at why this kind of academic misconduct is uh, happening the key drivers are competition you know i want to become professor i want to uh, become highest cited uh, somebody you know all these competition the priority claims i want to do it first before somebody else do it you know for prestige for high achievement uh, for high value commercial gains inadequate so there are several so a culture of honesty and integrity is needed to maintain the highest standards of ethical practice and behavior increasing pressure or desperation to publish resulted in a rapid increase in the number of research publications in predatory journals and that brought a lot of disreputation to our country policies and procedures for ensuring good research practices are needed and violations of any good practice must be addressed in a fair timely and transparent fashion and we hope that with this uh, national research foundation all this will be fixed more effectively the underlying values are also important ethics you know safeguard dignity rights safety and privacy of researchers participants in the researchers the rigor of research which ensures high quality in design reliable data and appropriate methodology rigorous and careful analysis the transparent reporting and interpretation in the results or proper interpretation of the results without getting temptation to overblow whatever we have observed you know the relevance is also important the environment and ecosystem the public and global good the science and society what relevance my research is to the society this question always has to be back of our mind and transparency honesty will be promoted through transparency in a fair full and unbiased fashion respect also is important aligned with the norms and traditions of society and its cultural heritage uh, the independence uh, the, uh, because we have to insulate research from the undue influence of funders just because somebody is funding doesn't mean that they should influence and there are uh, references even today that most of the clinical research which has happened you know most of the time the results have gone in favor of the funders you know? so these are the issues ethical issues which we must address accountability becomes also important uh, comply with relevant rules and procedures such as regulations of governing professional standards is also important Uh, there are several uh, websites and several uh, i would say resources which are available uh, for example committee on publication ethics commonly known as cop gives excellent resources uh, for publication ethics you know uh, the publication misconduct actually as i told you is fabrication falsification or plagiarism in proposing performing or reviewing research or in reporting research results as well typically plagiarism is appropriation of another person's ideas processes results or words without giving appropriate credit and now we are also hearing the terms like guest authors host authors gift authorship conflicts of interest all this comes under the publication ethics again i am not going to go in more details but the predatory journal i must give credit to jeffrey bial with whom i had pleasure of interacting uh, jeffrey bial Uh, used to come out with the bial's list uh, of predatory journals and i was part of a international exercise where we we'll develop a definition of what predatory journal is and our article was published in nature main edition and those who are interested can really uh, refer to that article in nature so while on one side uh, during last decade our image was tarnished in the international community regarding public opinion ethics plagiarism and academic misconduct in this decade we have seen to it that through efforts like here uh, the international community has started looking at it more seriously and also appreciating you know our efforts but still the cases continue if you look at retraction watch you know retraction watch has about 32000 retraction remember retraction meaning after you publish something if somebody points out some deficiencies or some misconduct in your research that article is withdrawn by the journal which has published it earlier you know so retraction is most humiliating and you will find that today in the database 32000 retraction exists so you can imagine the extent of this uh, academic integrity compromise you know uh, and out of this about 211 are related to covid so just during last two years 200 20 uh, articles have been 
uh, withdrawn, uh, which are reported in the retraction watch. I was very unhappy, actually hurt uh, and saddened to also read one of the recent case which was published in retraction watch in which a PhD student, remember PhD student has written actually that I need a publication in order to submit my thesis. And for that purpose, the author has admitted stealing of a manuscript from somebody else's work. And all this was exposed by the Retraction Watch website. And you will find that data available uh, at their website. Uh, 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 while at UGC, we had to make one criminal complaint in Delhi Police because one of the companies was actually selling PADs. And selling PADs means Unfortunately, they had made a PhD also. If you want a good PhD, uh, X is a prize. If you want a moderately better PhD, Y prize. If you want a uh, very good PhD, this is the prize. And the prize range was starting from 4,000 rupees for publication to 50,000, 1 lakh rupee for PhD. Now, what is this we are doing, friends? We are making mockery of it. Please let me tell you that if you are tempted to this kind of a shortcut to publish in predatory journals, your entire academic career will be ruined. And please don't do that. You may have that made that mistake. Please don't even cite your uh, predatory publications in your biodata because today at the highest level, when people look at the biodata, if they see that publications from such dubious journals are there, you will lose your chance even to get called for interview. So this is a very serious business and uh, UGC as a regulatory body has looked into it very carefully and the Consortium for Academic and Research Ethics, uh, please visit that website and see. Uh, you can also read my worldview article in Nature, which is also available now on the Nature website. Uh, as UGC, we took a, what in management they call it as CAPA, C-A-P-A, Corrective and Preventive Action. The purpose of CAPA is to collect information, analyze information, identify and investigate product and quality problems and take appropriate and effective, corrective and preventive action to prevent its recurrence in the past. Normally, CAPA principle is used in pharmaceutical industry, but we use the same principle in academic uh, work. And uh, CAPA is an overall effort to investigate and correct quality issues uh, to prevent recurrence and uh, uh, you know, the care is one of the uh, prominent outcome. All of you must also visit UGC website uh, to see a document, a guideline document, which we have published known as Good Academic Research Practices. This was published in September 2030 in collaboration uh, with uh, uh, one of the reputed uh, uh, science uh, database company uh, called Clarivet, which publishes uh, Web of Science and many other, the impact factor also belongs to them actually. So in short, I will end by saying that again, creativity and scientific research is for search of truth, creation of new body of knowledge. It is also about pleasure, devotion, and never ending quest for innovation. Please don't reduce it down to about only game of publication or race, or please don't get desperate, you know, or to get recognitions uh, just for, uh, research should not be based on all these parameters. As I mentioned, socioeconomic benefits are also very vital, but they should be natural outcomes of your research. With this, I will uh, end my talk again by thanking uh, Ignu and Professor Nagesh Rao, who is one of the good friends and colleagues, uh, uh, who is very efficiently handling by Shantar of Ignu for conducting this kind of exciting uh, lecture series uh, to expedite implementation of one of the most transformational policy which uh, we have received from Dr. Kasturi Randhan from National Education Policy 2020. With this, I wish you all the best and Namaskar, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.